Okay, my name is Carl Lackey. I'm a wildlife biologist from the Nevada Department of Wildlife. This is Banjo, one of my partners in crime. I'll tell you more about him in just a few minutes, okay? About halfway through this presentation, I'll tell you about Banjo and what his job is. Okay, I may consider a, a career in wildlife, wildlife biology. Well, a few things that you need to know. You gotta like working with animals, right? That's a must. Wildlife biology, if you don't like animals, you're in trouble. You treat animals with respect, right? We're not mean with animals. We don't hurt them on purpose. We treat them with respect. You guys do good in school? You like biology and science? Okay, good. If you plan on going to college, if you want to be a wildlife biologist, college is a must. So plan on that. You have appreciation for working in the outdoors. Do you like being outside? Okay, good. And that includes everything. That, that, you know, not just hiking the mountaintops, getting your truck stuck, flying around in airplanes and helicopters. Neat. All that good stuff. You afraid of the dark? Better not be. You like working with all kinds of critters, not just deer and elk and bears, but the creepy crawly things. There's my wife holding a rattlesnake, my son holding a bat, another son with a horny toad on his head, okay? All kinds of animals. Slippery, slimy stuff, two people that I work with, working with fish. Working out of helicopters, like I said, working out of airplanes. Do you have a strong stomach? Again, not only flying around, which can really wreak havoc on the old gut, but uh, doing things like knee crops, these on animals. Those two little tiny things you see there are deer embryos off a of deer that died. And are you safe with guns? Who's been through hunter safety? Good. Good, you gotta be safe with guns. That picture there, we're darting those bighorn sheep with a dart rifle. And are you willing to go where no man has gone before? Any, any guesses on what I'm crawling into there? One is a porcupine den, and the other one is a bear den. Going in and tranquilizing those critters when they're sleeping. Okay, can't be afraid to get your hands dirty with animals, blood and guts, animal scat, you name it. And of course, working independently and outside has its advantages, and that's where Banjo comes in. I get to take my best friends to work every single day. What's a day in the life of a wildlife biologist really like? Well, that's what my friends think I do, what my mom thinks I do, what society thinks we do, right? Steve Irwin, everybody remember him? Hollywood, what wildlife biologists think they do, they like to think they do themselves, and what we actually do, this is where the college work comes in, a lot of paperwork, a lot of computer work. A lot of field work, a lot of fun times, but you, you know, always end up back at the office typing up reports. Okay, we've been doing a lot of black bear research in Nevada for the last 25 years. Uh, handled a lot of bears over the years. And beginning in 2001, we started using Carillion bear dogs in bear management. And I'll tell you about Banjo and all my other dogs now. Okay, the Carillion bear dog you can look this up on, on Google Earth, but they come from the Karelian province of, Ru of Finland, which is right on the border between Finland and Russia. Okay, they were traditionally bred back in Finland and Russia for hunting brown bears. And that's a, that's a Finland or a Russian brown bear hunter with his Karelian bear dog. There it is blown up, the Karelia province between Finland and Russia. There are several states now in the U.S. that are using these. There are some people that use them for hunting, but primarily their use among the agencies 
is for black bear or grizzly bear management, some mountain lion or cougar management, and then they're also used by some of the national parks. And there's a few that are used for search and rescue. A lot of different uses of, of bear dogs and the reasons we have them. Really, we wanted a better way to, to connect with the public. We wanted to keep, find a way to keep bears on the landscape for a longer period of time. Okay, as I said, we started using these guys in 2001. And there is Banjo and Dazzle chasing a big bear. And I'll, I'll show you more here in just a second. But when we capture bears and tag them, when we release them, we try to give the bears a really very negative experience around people instead of always a positive one, meaning a food reward in the form of garbage or fruit trees. So that negative experience. Banjo's favorite thing is to bite bears on the butt as they're running away. Now what, what bites a bear other than other bears? Not much. So that's a very powerful message to a bear that, hey, I need to get out and move on. And that's Banjo there in the blue looking at that bear right in the face as he's running away. Very first dog that I had was Stryker in 2001. He was a grizzly bear dog. His son, Rooster, is the, the father of my female, who's not here, but Dazzle. Rooster and Stryker are both, have both died. They died a few years ago. But Rooster's offspring, actually, he actually has dogs or offspring that are in knit in Japan, working on Asiatic black bears. There's Dazzle chasing a bear. And the cool thing about this breed is they can bite a bear in the butt, a 400, 500 pound bear in the butt, dodge and weave as that bear takes swipes at them, come back to the truck and lick a kid, let you pet him, or in this case, sniffing a little baby bear. They have no desire to hurt bears, they just love the chase. I can put tranquilized bears in the back of my truck and the dogs could care less, they leave the bear alone. It's only when that bear's running that they wanna, they wanna go after it. And there's Banjo, in that puppy picture, that's him sitting in between Rooster and Dazzle. Okay, if you watch this video here, this is a typical release, and this is Rooster. How many of you think you can outrun a black bear now? Yeah, no way, no way. Up to 35 miles an hour. So what we do is we let the dog chase that bear up a tree, and then we back way, way off and we let the bear come out of the tree and wander off. The dog has done his job. Okay, I've got another picture of a release here. Now watch what Rooster does here to the bear. Chase it up the tree. We let the bear come down and let the dogs do it again. Yet. Watch this. See that bear look at him like, what in the world was that? One more time for you in slow motion. Okay, now the other thing we do with these, with these dogs is we're putting GoPros on the dogs and then chasing the bear. So watch this one. This is from the dog's point of view. Watch, he's looking for the bear, looking for the bear. Passing the photographer. Now this is what the dogs are good at. When that bear takes a swat at them, we've never had a dog seriously injured. They just box and weave with the bear on the ground, watch. He's about a foot away from the bear right now. Now pretty soon here, you're gonna see another dog come into the picture from the left. These are brother and sister. When this other dog, dog comes in, that bear looks at him, he goes, you know what? I have had enough of this. And he takes off running again. 
and they're barking like crazy. I have the audio turned off on this, but they're just barking like crazy at the bear. There's the other dog. And there goes the bear. And we just let the dogs chase them for a little bit, and then we call them back. Okay, so other than this treatment that we give, the, I had one reporter describe it as a spank and release. That's basically what we're doing to the bears, right? Other than that, conflict resolution and, and capturing bears, some of the other things we use bear dogs for. Well, we get calls like this every year where bears break into homes. And in this case, this was an, this, this person, Banjo, hit. This bear was not, live, or not in this house at the time, but we didn't know that. The person wasn't living there. They hadn't been there in over six years, but they still had food in the freezer. So two bears, brother and sister, had broken into this house and were living in it for several weeks. <laughs> sleeping on the beds, pooping in the living room, as you can see here. Well, the bear dog's job, because we don't know if the bear is still inside the house or not, so the dogs go inside the house with us. And if the bear's there, they'll alert us to it, they'll start barking, sometimes they'll chase the bear out, other times the bear stays put and then we can dart it, tranquilize it. Bears like, especially up in Tahoe, they like to den underneath homes. And in this case, you can see that big old bear underneath the house, Usually what happens is people come home, they've been gone all winter, they come back for their two-week ski vacation, and the, the plumbing isn't working, or the heat, heating isn't working. So what do they do? They call the plumber. The plumber goes under to the house to fix the pipes, comes across the bear. They call us, we'll go underneath the house with the bear dog, chase the bear out, and then the people seal up that crawl space entrance. We get bears that are roaming around town. Uh, this, some of these are up in Tahoe, that one where we're tranquilizing the bear in that bottom right hand corner, that's in downtown Carson City. If anybody's from Carson. Well, the bear dogs chased that bear around, he went up a tree and came back down, they put him in the garage. The bear was tired at that point and we were able to tranquilize it. I mentioned denning before, going into bear dens. Well, a lot of times we have collars on most of our bears. Well, when we don't, or we can't find the bear, these dogs have very good noses, and they'll help us locate that den, because it's a lot of times just covered with snow. You don't know where the actual entrance is. They'll help us locate it, find the den, and then we can go in and tranquilize mom, and then we do the things with the cubs like we're doing here. We're weighing them and sexing them and uh, putting little microchips in them, things like that. And then, of course, the educational ambassadors. That's what Banjo is doing right now. Well, now he's licking his paw. But that's what he does. He, he loves kids. He loves going out on these, on these talks and presentations, seeing people, uh, really, really good ambassadors for what we're trying to do with Corellian Bear Dogs. OK. With that, I will take any questions that you have. Yeah, go ahead. Where did I get Banjo? Banjo came from Ontario, Canada, from a place, and you can look it up online, especially if you like social media, look up Viking Hunter Kennels. And you can see pictures, actually, you'll see pictures of Banjo up there. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, could any big dog be, uh, bear? Can any big dog be a bear dog? Yeah. Well, yes and no. A lot of dogs, like labs and animals like that, they'll chase a bear, but then when that bear turns around and starts to chase them, that's when a lot of accidents occur because those dogs come right back to their owners 
and a lot of times right here, you know, right next to you. And there's been several occurrences, places like Montana, where dogs chase grizzly bears. Dog comes back to the owner and they bring that grizzly bear with them. And people get mauled pretty seriously that way. On the other hand, I've had little tiny dogs, like chihuahuas, chase a bear and the bear goes up a tree. So it really depends on the dog and it really depends on the bear. Girl here in red. Question is, how long have I been doing this? I've been doing the bear since 1996, uh, 25 years. And I've, I had my first Corellian bear dog in 2001. Banjo is four years old. He was born on July 4th, so he'll be five in July. Okay, keep it down just a little bit. Uh, back there, the pink hat. Do bears like donuts? Is that your question? Yeah, go ahead and come on up here. I can't hear you. Oh, bear trap with a, yeah, that's what I trap. The bears have a sweet tooth. You guys know Winnie the Pooh, always eating honey? Well, black bears are the exact same. They have a sweet tooth. We don't want to bait a trap with meat because it tends to rot and stink, although bears will eat it. We do it with pastries and fruit. They don't rot, bears love it. And uh, yeah, so donuts. You guys know the favorite type of donut for a bear? Bear claw, there you go. Okay, gentlemen right there in the purple. Okay, quiet down. No, these dogs live with, these are my dogs. They live with me. My kids, they, I mean, they sleep with our kids at night, curl up on their bed. Yeah, no, they, they are part of the family. Go ahead. What is the worst damage that happens to a dog? Like, what is the worst injury? The worst injury to the dog? Um, Striker was chasing a bear once, and the big bear, and he went up a tree about 10 feet, and Stryker was at the base of the tree barking. Well, the bear decided to jump out of the tree, and when he jumped, he landed right on top of Stryker. Stryker went poof like that in the snow. The bear took off, Stryker jumped up, shook himself off, and took off after the bear. <laughs> Go ahead, right here. Did I buy Banjo? Yes. Banjo was, um, at the time, 1700 or 1500 They go now, the same place that I bought Banjo from is selling Corell male Corellians for 1800 which is cheap for Corellians, believe it or not. There's a lot of places that sell them for a lot more. Yes, sir. Can banjo work for any bear? Uh, all we have here in Nevada is black bears, and he's probably chased, I don't know, 200 bears in the last four, four years or so. Uh, this last year we were really busy, and he probably chased 50 in just, just this summer. So yeah, but now Corellians are used on grizzly bears, a little bit different. They usually keep them on leash for a lot of the time. Uh, they're used on polar bears, Asiatic black bears. You bet. Question back. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, he, the question is, do we train the dogs? Kind of like a yellow lab. They want to retrieve something, and you want to tell them, teach them how to retrain ducks or whatever for you. Corellians love to hunt, they love to chase things. We just need to teach them not to chase the deer, right, or the squirrel. We want them chasing the bear and to focus on the bear. He chases plenty of squirrels when he's not chasing bears, but when it comes time to work, then he's focused. Yes? 
How many bear dogs do I have? I have two, Banjo and Dazzle. My coworker has five. Yes, go ahead. What kind of bear? These are all black bears. Now black bears, just like we have blonde hair and black hair and red hair, bears are the same way. They come in a lot of different color phases. These are all black bears in Nevada. Every picture I showed you is a black bear. Okay, about three more questions. In the red shirt, go ahead. How many known squirrels has banjo Known squirrels as banjo kill. I don't know because he hides them from me. Yes. How many cubs have I seen? I, I uh, a hundred or two. Yeah, easily. Yeah, a lot more than that. That actually. Yes. Are the bears camouflage? No, they're pretty easy to spot. Yeah. Yes. I can't hear you. Why do you let the, the dogs bite the bear and then let it go? Why do we let the dogs bite the bear and let it go? We are trying to give the bear a very negative experience with people and in, in urban areas. The dogs do that because there's not anything else that bites a bear other than another bear. So it is a very negative experience. Okay, two more questions. Yes, sir. Has he ever killed a bear? Absolutely not. Doesn't want to kill him, doesn't want to attack him. He just loves biting him in the butt. In the back, the girl standing up. I have had four bear dogs, Striker, Rooster, Dazzle, and now Banjo. Okay, thank you guys. Uh,